What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your recording at 1 in the morning host, Captain Zack, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady, with a little bit from the much requested r slash choosing beggars. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, Entitled Mother Thinks I Got Her Daughter Pregnant. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm born female, but I identify as gender fluid. I go by they or them. I usually dress as neutrally as possible. My hair is also pretty short. This story took place three years ago in 2016. Note, the words that are italicized are in French. I was at a game store with my dad when I was 13. We were playing some board games and we got pretty hungry. So he went to get some food from somewhere, I don't remember where, and he left me at the store. He was good friends with the owner, so he was comfortable leaving me there while he went out and got food. I was wearing a t-shirt, jeans, a baggy Legend of Zelda hoodie that hides my chest, tennis shoes, and a beanie that hid my hair. I was wandering around the comic books when I was grabbed by the shoulder and spun around. I looked up, I'm short, and I saw the face of a Karen. She started screaming at me, but I was kinda confused and had earbuds in. She then noticed the earbuds and yanked them out. Now I could hear what she was saying. How dare you listen to music while working? You shouldn't be listening to music while you're working. I've been trying to get your attention for 10 minutes. This isn't true. I had only been in the comic book section for less than 5 minutes. I'm sorry, but I don't work here. I might be able to help you find what you're looking for though. I'm in here a lot. Just FYI. The store's uniform is jeans and a black polo with the store's logo on the right of the chest and on the back. I don't want anything from this Mad Deke store. I want to know why you got my daughter pregnant. What? You heard me. You got my daughter pregnant. Miss, that's impossible. I'm... Don't you talk back to me, young man. I'm going to tell your manager about you violating my daughter. Miss, I didn't do anything to your daughter. I was trying to tell you- Shut up! By the way, it was pretty late at night, and the store owner was in the back, at the opposite end of the store, and probably couldn't hear her screeching. Miss! Suddenly, a woman, entitled mother's daughter, entered the store and rushed over to me, and the Xian Fu started talking to the woman. What are you doing? I'm yelling at the a-hole who viol you! Entitled mother's daughter rolls her eyes so hard I swear I heard them pop. David didn't viol me. I was completely aware what was happening and I consented to it fully. Also, that isn't David. Don't lie to me. That boy is David and there is no way you had sex with him. You're too young to have sex. I am 24, married to David, and David is a foot taller than this kid. This continued for a few minutes, back and forth. Eventually, I just took off my beanie and my hoodie and just stood there, staring at the mom. Me, done with this mom's connery, miss! Entitled mother finally turned around to me and her face went white as a sheet. She finally noticed that I had taken off the items that hid my birth gender. As you can see, I am physically incapable of getting anyone pregnant. The mom says nothing and storms out of the store, knocking down several stands of games. I'm so sorry about that. My mom is still convinced that I haven't been married to David for three years. I don't know why she thought you were him, though. You look nothing like him. She then showed me a picture of David, and she was right. David had short black hair, was very tan, and was really tall. I am short, pale, and very blonde. I don't really remember what happened after Entitled Mother's Daughter left, though. I just went back to looking at comic books. Alright guys, I'm sorry, but I have to, have to do this. Please, excuse my French in that story. This story's called, Inverse, I Don't Work Here, Karma. I told one story earlier today from just before I switched careers. Since I've only got a short time to myself right now, I think I'll share a short one that may go to explain why I am the way I am. Back in freshman year of high school, I'd lived with my grandparents for a few years. All sorts of family drama, but it was really well sorted. My dad was an over-the-road driver and my mom was mental, and they divorced. My grandmother, who's going to outlive everyone on this entire site, has been and always will be a smartass of the highest caliber. 
In case you're wondering, that's where I get it from. Anyway, we're out shopping at the mall. My grandmother is wanting to buy me clothes since spring is coming, but being a teenage boy, I couldn't possibly care less. If you gave me a burlap sack, I'd wear that and hide into my Walkman and hiss incoherently as passers-by. But Grandma isn't going to tolerate a poorly dressed child in her home. So shopping we were. Me hovering in the 90s teenager uniform of a neon t-shirt and jeans, and her being annoyed that I didn't want to wear something that hadn't gone out of style in the 50s. So, as is her way of getting back at me, she knows she can embarrass me with little effort. High school freshman, after all. So we're having a row about her getting me a pair of khakis you'd have to bury me in to get me to wear. And me being the typical teenage boy who's embarrassed to be clothes shopping because... Reasons? Hormones are weird. So while we're walking towards the docks and whatnot, the crowd begins to build. It was a sale weekend, hence why we were there, and my grandmother has had enough of my teenagerisms. So as we're walking, she's talking to me over her shoulder despite being a foot shorter than me. Well, maybe if you brought some cute girl along, you'd complain less about trying on nice clothes. Cute teenage heart attack? Ah, quiet! We're in public! My grandmother gets that please sound in her voice. Maybe that little blonde girl who rides the bus with you? She might get you to dress like a human being. Please, please not here. This is all going on in angry whispers before the crowd thickens up. She, being about 5'2 at most, has no problem navigating the bottleneck. But me, I'm jostled around. I eventually keep following her, but there's a very dark-skinned man between me and her wearing the store uniform. No big deal, this is how shopping crowds work. He'll move around her and I can catch up in a second. But then her little game goes horribly wrong. She speaks over her shoulder saying, Well, maybe I should just get you some new underwear so you can show it off for some of those girls. Only then does she turn around. The guy, to his credit, is smiling. I'm laughing and she looks mortified. Oh God, I'm sorry, you're not my grandson. The guy doesn't miss a beat. He smiles and says, Does this mean you won't buy me that underwear now? She laughs. He laughs. We all go our separate ways. But she never said some smart-ass things to me without looking again. Wherever that guy is, I hope he still tells the story of the little white-haired granny who offered to buy him underwear to show off for the girls. And that is the inverse of I don't work here summed up, as it only could be, by my wise-ass old grandmother. This story's called Rental Car Beggar. I've been working at a rental car company in one of the busiest locations in the world for 16 years. I work in the logistics department, and even though I'm not in customer service, I am authorized to give minor upgrades for free. When I do give an upgrade, I have to update it in the system on a tablet so that the customer has no issues when exiting. The way our rental lot is set up is cars are designated in areas by car class. So, if you book a full-size, you go to the full-size section and pick out whatever car you prefer in that section and drive it to the exit gate. Our compact section is directly next to our mid-size section, so customers tend to wander through both sections. Now look, I get it. People on vacation try to save money, so they book the cheapest car possible. And I understand that people ask to get something better for free. If people are nice and polite, I will always give them an upgrade if they're rude from the get-go, I tell them they have to go back inside and talk to a customer service rep about upgrade pricing. In comes our choosing beggar. It was a young couple. The boyfriend asked me, Excuse me, I booked a compact car and I wanted to know what cars are available to me. I walk him to the compact section and point out the rows. He then tells me, What about this Corolla? Can I take this one? A Corolla is a midsize, but he was being polite, so I told him, Fine, you can have this Corolla. Let me just update it on my tablet. He then tells me, Hold on, what else can I get? If you're giving me an upgrade, I want to see what else I can get. I get irritated and tell him, Didn't you specifically say you wanted the Corolla? He then tells me, Yeah, but now I want to see if I can get something better. What about this Altima? An Altima is a full-size car, so he wanted to jump two car classes now. Another customer that was patiently waiting for me to finish so that he can ask me a question says, If he doesn't want the Corolla, I'll be happy to take it. I tell the patient customer, yeah, go for it, it's all yours. 
I then look at the choosing beggar and tell him, I'm sorry sir, but if you want the Ultima, you're gonna have to go back inside and discuss pricing for an upgrade. He then tells me, fine, I'll take the Corolla. And then I told him, sorry, that car isn't available anymore. Feel free to pick anything out of the compact zone though. He grabbed a mid-sized car anyway, but the exit gate wouldn't let him out and sent him back to his correct section. Okay, honestly, I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> redundant much, um, I kinda don't see the harm in trying to get something better for free. Um, in the, in the, the Redditor's perspective, yeah, I can see how that would be annoying or rude given that, you know, he has to deal with it all the time. But this guy just wanted to, he saw that he had the opportunity to get a free upgrade, so he wanted, you know, to see if he can get something better, which isn't the most polite, but it's not like he was being kind of a jerk about it, you know? And it was his turn, so it's kind of messed up that the dude, that the Redditor let the other person get the Corolla. I don't know, that's just my opinion, but let me know in the comments below, as I'm sure you already will, that I'm wrong. This story's called, Choosing Beggar Wants Luxury Items But Won't Pay For Them. So, I work as a salesperson in an electronics store. We've had this lady in recently that doesn't seem to understand that stores exist to trade the customer's money in exchange for goods and services. She's been in several times now, and each time is weirder than the last. First Encounter Choosing Beggar comes into the store and starts yelling at me to help her and that she's in a hurry. Never mind the fact that I'm in the middle of helping someone else. I tell her I'll be done in a minute, all the while she's hanging over us and trying to jump in and take over. A couple of times, she even shouted, I'm thirsty, give me water! So when it's finally her turn, she starts yelling at me more. I need an Apple Watch, give me an Apple Watch! I'm sorry, but we don't have the model you want in right now. But I can order one for you. Alright, what's your phone number? Of course, she isn't registered so I have to fill in her information manually. Punch in the information quickly, I'm in a hurry! I have an appointment at the hospital, I'm thirsty, give me water now! I'm sorry, we're in the middle of an electronics store, I don't have any water to hand out here, but you can buy a bottle by the cashier. Come on, go fast! Flicking her hand in my face, all she's doing at this point is distracting and distressing me so that I have to double check the information and spend way longer than needed. I skip some of the things we're supposed to recommend like payment plans, service plans, and accessories since she's in a hurry, and send her along her way. Alright, everything is ready, you can go over to the register to finalize the order. A few minutes later, the cashier comes down to my department while I am helping some new customers. Clearly confused and says, um, she says she doesn't have any money now and wants to pay later, so I tell him, Oh, she told me she was in a hurry. I can set up a payment solution for her, but it's gonna take a little while. She can't have it both fast and all sorted, it's one or the other. So she comes back with a half-empty soda bottle that she hasn't paid for. This time, she hardly says a word, just waits for me to fill everything in and apply for credit. To my surprise, it comes through and everything is in order. I even added the soda to the final sum in order to cover it, and she leaves. Second Encounter this time, she's bustling into the store to pick the watch up, but she's dragging someone in with her. Turns out, it's a taxi driver. I don't have any money, you guys have to sort it out, pay the taxi, she says. Meanwhile, going over to the register and grabbing another soda and gulping down half of it before anyone can stop her. Again, we try to explain to her that it doesn't work like that. I have to set up specific orders for specific items that are part of our stock and there's a minimum spending limit. You cannot go get cash to pay other people. You cannot just take things from the store and just have it added to some sort of tab either. Taking those drinks is outright theft. She refuses to listen and keeps repeating that she doesn't have the time nor money and has to sort it out the next time she's in. Seeing how ridiculous the situation is, we give up, shove the watch into her arms, and tell taxi driver to call the cops as she's not gonna pay for the ride. She left with the taxi driver, so we don't know how this went down. One of my colleagues revealed to me she's been in another time in the meantime as well. Her face caked up in some dried up facial treatment goo. So my colleagues call her the mask lady, while I call her the soda lady. Asking for the watch and ended up having them call an ambulance because she kept going on about being too tired to go home and telling them to call someone to help her. 
Turns out, she just wanted a free ride home. Third encounter? Apparently nothing of great consequence happened to her, as she learned absolutely nothing. So, this time, she came back with the watch and demanded that we set it up and connect it to her phone, and get all the apps working the way she wants it to work. The guys in our technical support haven't encountered her yet, so they just start working without any suspicions, and she goes and grabs another soda. When the job is done and she has to pay, she finally blurts out, I have no money, I have to fix it some other time. Luckily, our operations manager was at the desk as well and was having none of it and promptly took the watch as insurance until she can pay for the service and all the sodas she's been stealing. I'm surprised they got her to leave without the watch. So now we're just waiting to see what her next escapade will bring. I am also completely expecting her to bring us the invoice for the watch and tell us to pay for the watch as well at some point. Wow, um, honestly, I can't really think of any logical reason as to why she would be like this, other than potential mental illness, maybe? I don't know. Someone in the comments is bound to know something about this, so let me know. I'm curious as to what's ailing her, mentally, that is. Or should I say logically? I don't know. This story's called Chris Brown Gift Basket Gone All Wrong. Through a really long, weird set of circumstances, when I was 27, I adopted a 15-year-old. His mom went to jail when he was 13 and it was supposed to be temporary. At 15, she showed up at my house and told him that legally she was no longer his mother because she was worried the state would make her pay them back for me caring for him while she was away. By this time, we had bonded and the rest is history. About a year after the adoption, a family member contacted me saying that she wanted the chance to meet him because his mom had moved away before she was born. She was into genealogy and just thought it would be nice. She seemed like a normal person, so I asked my son if he wanted to. He was iffy but wanted to try. We sent her an email to sort it all out. It was right around Christmas time and she mentioned exchanging gifts. So we made her a little gift basket with candies and scented candles, etc. We drove a few hours away to meet at a cafe in her town. She seemed bored through the whole meeting. He gave her the gift basket and she just sort of frowned at it. I thought you worked at some big hotel in any town USA. Can't you buy name brand? I didn't understand what she meant because all the things we got her were name brand. You know, like Sensi. What's this Yankee candle crap? My son gave me a nudge and it was time to go. We just thanked her for meeting him and went to pay the bill. I got an email from her later saying she wouldn't have ordered a backup lunch if she knew I was going to make her pay her side of the bill. Okay, first off, I just really want to appreciate this person taking in a 15 year old. Like that is definitely not, you know, something ideal. And I don't know, it just really, really warms my heart when I read about people adopting kids and I, I don't know, and if they seem like they treat them as if they were their own child, which they are, you know? I don't know. Um, it just seems like unconventional, you know? And I don't know. I, I just really, really appreciate it, you know? Anyways, yeah, she's a real choosing beggar. <laughs> I'm actually curious to know how many of you guys actually watch the videos, uh, you know, read along as opposed to just setting it aside and listening while you're doing something. I'm curious because... Depending on how many of you guys read along as opposed to just listen, I can do my narrations a little bit differently. So let me know right now. Thank you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.